we can start using the to the first speaker of our position. I'm going to start in three, two, one, go. The market and governments adapt to the demand of global and population. But what comes first? Economy or the environment? Good morning, everyone. My name is Sarah Nankana. I'm the first speaker for the opposition team. Today, we're debating about the motion environmental movements should focus more on edu educating individual citizens rather than pressuring governments and companies. Before starting to talk about what our team is going to bring to you today, I would like to give you a brief explanation of what is the con uh, con context uh, of the world we're currently living in. So let's say that we live in a world in which climate change is one of the most huge problems regarding everyone, of course. But despite this, economy and economic interests prevail over the environmental ones, creating turmoil among, among the interest ones. So we've made progresses, but still not enough to tackle and to make effective changes to get rid of what is the climate change and to reach net zero by 2050, as was said in the COP26. We've uh, highlighted a problem, which basically is that environmental movements are still small, as well as not listened enough. So nothing really significant has been done by governments towards a drastic change in better for our planet resulting in anger against them from this little movement. Moreover, companies simply don't care about what the small movements are saying, also because big companies like multinational ones are the ones that are polluting the most, and we all know that as a, as a matter of fact. This anger that comes from this little movement is the one that leads to a creation of more radical parts of them that are the ones that end up throwing tomato soups on important paintings in the national galleries or other museums in Portland all around the world, obtaining the opposite of the effect that they want, because they are not sensibilizing people in this way. They are just making them lose interest in, an eco in this ecological turnaround that must be achieved as soon as possible. So radicals are not listened to. The public opinion goes against these movements, and at the end, no changes are made. In fact, we are not saying that pressure on the government or other companies mustn't be applied, as well as companies, of course, as I said that. But we're just saying that the main focus should be on educating um, the single individuals, the, which is the most concrete, practical, and effective action. We are going to do that with our model that basically states that since in our world we live in, um, uh, in conditions that social media are basically um, the ones that have strongest impacts on people, most importantly the younger one, um, and um, uh, also these younger ones will be our future generation models, we'll use then these social medias to educate individuals on the environment sensibilize them and spread the message in the whole society. For example, for influencers and collaboration, in addition to uh, campaign courses and social activity, all promoted by these movements. So then I would like to introduce you to our team one, which basically says that we would support the position presented by the motion at the position team, as it would result in being extremely efficient thanks to the system of action. With that we are taking into consideration, impactful and effective in the long run. We will bring changes in three levels, as well as three main argumentations, basically. The first one is going to be, environmental movements would be more listened and accepted as necessary for the general uh, global purpose, which is the argument I'm going to develop as a first speaker. Then the second one is going to be citizens who participate more and feel more devoted to resolving the problem. And the third one, the future society wouldn't experience the problems we face nowadays. Would it, wouldn't experience the problems that we face nowadays. These two um, last arguments will be the arguments that the second group speaker is going to talk about. But now, moving on to main, uh, my main argument, which indeed is environmental movements would be more listened and accepted as necessary for the general global purpose. But why is that? In the context, we have, been, we have found two main problems, which are, first of all, movements are not listened. Then, uh, as a consequence of that, they get angry and become then counterproductive. They become inefficient. 
as that population doesn't uh, agree with the action, but with the radical actions that are taken into consideration and are put into act. Then second of all, they are uh, together with the uh, with this, the fact that they are not listened, no changes are achieved. Because the economy wins over the environment in our world, because we can't pretend that everything goes fine. Our world is a most egoistic one, so the most powerful people will be always more focused on enriching their, themselves through economy rather than considering the world. Because at this point, a key concept comes into practice, which is the uh, prisoner's dilemma. In this case, the prisoner dilemma explains how, with two prisoners, one of them might get uh, the free from their uh, accusation. But this will only happen if one of them confesses. As an analogy, we, as a, a, like the most strong com uh, companies or either power uh, powerful um, uh, organization in the world, hope that someone else takes this action to intervene against uh, environmental uh, problems so that they can continue to enrich themselves. But this is wrong because we must take action equally on everyone. And the best way to do that is to sensibilize directly individual citizens. So, our position will be then effective on two levels. The movements won't get angry, so they won't be badly seen by the population. They wouldn't have then to ruin work of art. They wouldn't have to do such radical action, bashing uh, windows, uh, etc. Their job will be more effective on the population, to which they would feel closer to the population and dream to automatically. Then, second of all, governments rule on the population and company uh, 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 rule for the population, and the companies produce for what the mass wants. So, if we want changes we must directly change the population. In fact, since governments and companies, as I said, um, respond to the majority uh, for the government, the government responds to the majority of what, um, of what uh, the individuals want, and companies respond to the basic needs of individuals, uh, the, um, we do, uh, they will need to follow this kind of change in order to adapt to their will. If we teach them the less impactful habits and importance of sustainability, we'll change the government's rule and especially the production and companies that respond to the economic maxima. This way will finally solve the problem that environmental policies are subjected to um, uh, the economic principles, helping the environment and the people living on Earth. The economy adapts to itself as an invisible end is actually uh, guiding it. And this is an important quotation by the philosopher and economist Arthur Smith. And this represents why we should, we should uh, put, uh, focus more on education and educating individual citizens rather than pressuring governments and companies, and this must be done by environmental movements, as I said before, because it would result extremely efficient thanks to the system of action. Impactful and effective in the long run. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, your speech was eight minutes and five which is environmental movements should focus more on educating individual citizens rather than pressuring government companies. Uh, first of all, uh, before to go on with my own speech, I would like to do the reputation um, of what has been said so far by the first uh, proposition team. So, uh, she said the um, environmental movements are more accepted as necessary for the global purpose. But we disagree with this because we think that 
governmental government, sorry, are more efficient and uh, they have the power. So uh, they have law and they are the law and they don't have to um, make the uh, uh, the on the favor of the citizens because they make law. So if the government says something is the law and everybody must respect this, then citizen then she said the citizen get hungry with uh, radical movements because uh, but we don't think so. That's not true because not all the radical action uh, is uh, uh, are above to which governmental. Now I would like to give you some definition that uh, other team missed to give uh, to to us. So I would like to do this now. Uh, by environmental movement, uh, we mean a group of people that is concerned about the environment, of course. Um, then for government, we mean that uh, a body of person, we uh, mean that a government of person is, which is governing, governing a state. And then by pressure, we mean applied pressure to an individual group or individual or a group. Uh, now I would like to give you some context because it's so important to give you some context um, about the emotion we're discussing now. So nowadays, climate change is one of the biggest problems we are facing now. Uh, the rising, for example, of the temperature caused extreme weather that destroyed the habitat of many species, including the human one. Uh, with the rising of sea levels, so sea level rise is extreme, um, an extreme and very important issue because uh, a lot of cities, for example, Venice or Amsterdam, but also states as Kiribati are going to disappear. And we don't want it. So, um, and this isn't a dystopian vision. This is happening right now in front of our eyes. So we must take action, fast, quickly, and effective action to prevent that something terrible happen to our planet, which is the planet Earth. Um, our principle is that we want to defend is efficiency and effectiveness of the action and of the decision. We strongly believe as opposition team that environmental movements pressure on government make action and decision more efficient and effective. And effective. Mm -hmm. uh, our team line is, uh, um, is the following. The first speaker, which is me, is going to talk about efficiency. So what impact will have the environmental movement pressure on the government and uh, on the efficiency, so on the speed of the action and of the decision? Then the second speaker will talk about the effectiveness of this pressure on the uh, government. And then the third speaker, of course, will, will uh, rebuild our position and also give you some new examples. Uh, but let's, let's start with our first argument. So, we strongly believe that environmental movement pressure on the governments increase the efficiency of the decision and the action of course in the fight against climate change. So, uh, governments have a role. This role is one to take decisions and make plans for the future. And make plans for, uh, for the future. So, uh, in a simply and short phrase that I want to say, governments make law. They are the law. Hi. Yes. Um, do you know that we are not repeating um, uh, the um, environmental movements to pressure government and company? We are just saying to focus more on the education. Yes, of course. Thank you for your question. But we strongly believe that it's more effectiveness to uh, let the environmental movement press on the governmental companies, companies and this will be more effective than pressure on the food pressure on the citizens. So this is the one we're discussing now. So it has I will go on with my own speech. It has the, the government had the power to influence many states in a short period of time. And timing is something that is against us because the clock is running so fast. 
uh, we, uh, the world we are living now is time. And because of this, we must take action in a faster and quickly way. You are Yes. Uh, do you know that the uh, president, uh, like the uh, conference that have been done, uh, did not bring to any results by now? No. Thank you, President. But we think that's not true. Because something is going to, uh, to happen. Because the uh, government, but also you and, for example, uh, is thinking in this period to apply action, so something uh, is going to is going to happen. Of course, this is only the start of the um, of the plan for the future. But the third speaker will give you uh, some more details about this question. Um, so. uh, we need speed and efficiency to face climate change issues. Uh, I would like to bring you the following example, which is Greta Thunberg. She, since she was very young, studied protesting every Friday, and I say every Friday, against climate change. And uh, uh, she founded her own environmental <laughs> movement that includes in the years um, our, um, older guys from all over the world. So, and this movement is called Friday the Future. She protests for a lot of years in the way that governmental organizations like you and invited her to meeting, international meeting and summit. And she spoke and sensibilized uh, people to this question in the way that you and, for example, is going to do something uh, to face climate change. So, uh, this is why we strongly believe we need efficiency on the action and on the decision that concerning climate change. So with my speech, I hope I've been able to demonstrate to you why environmental movements sh uh, shouldn't uh, uh, focus more on educating individuals to take the pressure of environmental companies. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, your speech. Seven minutes and 59 seconds. Should follow more the path of educating people rather than putting pressure on governments and uh, companies. I will uh, talk about my implementation, but first of all, I'd like to reflect what the team has said. We wrote as uh, our first implementation the fact that the system of action of more environmental movements will be more efficient following our uh, team and path. And you, as a computation, wrote the fact that governments are more, and I quote, Governments are more efficient and have more power. And that's the point. Until now, uh, movements have focused on putting pressure on governments. And governments, due to the fact that these uh, movements are only a little part of the population, did not listen to them. Governments are the ones who uh, govern and make the law, yes, but for the whole population. So if the whole population changes its uh, uh, mind and also its behavior toward the environment, then the government will also change its rules to a more sustainable way. Then, um, as your first uh, slide, I'm aware that, uh, that many, many initiatives were taken uh, by the government thanks to uh, these uh, environmental laws. Many initiatives. Yes, but uh, as I will see, as I will see we see after with uh, my other computation, uh, the decisions that are taken by the governments are not effective. Indeed, uh, I remember to this point. 
So as your first recommendation, you talked about the efficiency of the government because they rules take, uh, taking decisions. And uh, we are not saying that we should not also put pressure on the governments. But I was saying before, sensibilizing more the equation, the population would bring to the whole population asking their rulers to make more environmental uh, friendly rules. And then uh, about your question, my uh, teammate Sarah has already answered to that with the, the dilemma of the prisoner. If uh, uh, governments um, take decisions between themselves, in order to um, have a, to embrace a more environmentally friendly uh, path, then the population of these uh, states do not, uh, at 360 degrees, uh, want uh, really to take this path. The governments will uh, be less um, devoted into uh, taking real actions because, as I said, governments act for the population, rule for the population demand. Then uh, you also talked about conferences and accords, but uh, as I said, they didn't do anything because the population is the first that do not see climate change as an issue. And then you made the example of Greta Thunberg, but first of all, you say that she sensibilized the population. And, for example, she uh, tried to go against the government, but she was made fun of by Donald Trump, that is the president of the United States of America. So she didn't do anything in the government uh, um, sector. Now, moving on to my uh, two arguments. First of all, the uh, fact that uh, civilians should participate more and feel more the world that no, thank you, to resolving the problem. So, uh, this uh, sensibilizing more, uh, focusing more on uh, educating people will bring to a change in the society. The change of the society will bring to a change also in the whole human environmental impact. Because and it will be more efficient at a global scale because, as we've seen, the first time companies and governments will change their uh, their decisions. Then the society, because of the change of the society, the society also the single citizen will change its, its um, uh, behavior. For example, will behave in a less polluting way, will have green, more green attitude, uh, with the uh, pollute, will less will use less water, less energy waste. Uh, we also be more aware of his actions, throwing things in, um, on, uh, in the environment. Nowadays, it's seen little uh, things that uh, wouldn't make a change. But if the whole population do that, then we have a change. Uh, more, moreover, they will have a more responsible consumption of food. Agenda 12, 2030 puts as a, uh, its 12th goal the um, um, the responsible consumption of food. So now we will be aware of which food is less polluting. If it is more polluting the uh, apple that comes from the greenhouse made in Britain or the apple made, I don't know, in Mexico. Then, um, last but not least, we will buy more green products. At the, at the, nowadays, governments uh, try to take some environmentally friendly action, for example, prohibiting the, the production of some uh, plastic tools, for example, uh, uh, straws or cutips. But this is not really welcome by the population. Even the production of greener uh, plastic, pl with greener products, such as plates that are made with eco-friendly plastic. This is not uh, really uh, <coughs> welcome by the population because the population is the first who do not anything, who do not uh, completely know uh, everything about the environmental situation in which we are in. So, if the change of the production do not affect the population, it will be the change of the population that will affect the production. So, this uh, um, demonstrates that the behavior of the society has a strong impact on our environment. Many times people want to uh, behave in a more sustainable way, but do not really know how. So now moving on to my third argument. Uh, the future society wouldn't experience the problems we face nowadays. So as we, we propose in our model, through uh, social media, uh, the first generation that could uh, learn how to be how to behave in a more friendly, eco-friendly way will be the young generation. The young generation are our future. And um, I'm going to structure this organization on two levels. First of all, what do we want to teach to our future generation? 
that uh, changes are made by ruining paintings and just uh, being angry against the government, things that also in the past didn't uh, um, work, for example, with the feminist movement, the suffragists, that uh, took power only thanks to the changes in actual the Greek society after the First World War, or by the um, learning skills and the being able in the future to be the pressure learner, learners of our, uh, our uh, um, state. Then, um, if the generation now learn how to change things in the future, they will be the rulers of the future governments of the future companies. So they will make greener um, decisions for their uh, greener career path, um, um, ensuring that our world, our companies, our go uh, governments to always follow a more sustainable way of uh, economic system. Because as we've seen before, um, economic uh, economy must be built in the future or in our environmental needs. So through my speech I've been telling you that uh, environmental movements should support and focus more on the leading citizens rather than pressuring government in, in governments and companies because society will have a less impact on the environment and learning how to behave and in the future we will have more responsible citizens and more responsible governors that will bring the world to always a more green and uh, sustainable uh, lifestyle. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Yours. Eight minutes and twenty-five seconds. far too much time and not to mention resources that I doubt that our environmental movements possess. And you also um, pointed out that Greta Thunberg uh, was made fun of by Donald Trump. And yes, that is absolutely true, sadly. But that is the same president that outright denied climate change despite the evidence being thrown in his face. So I don't think we should take Donald Trump as the best example. Not to mention that Donald Trump is one president out of so many other presidents. Also, you talked about the same yes. Uh, yes, he's one president, but it's one of the um, most important presidents because it's one of the president for the most the biggest nation. Yes, that is true. Uh, thank you for your question, first of all. And yes, that's true. Donald Trump is one of the most was one of the most important presidents. But uh, first of all, he was not voted again, I mean, probably for a reason, because uh, outside of America, and even inside America, he did not have that much favor, because he, he made a lot of statements, as, just like this one, of, of, the, of denying uh, climate change, that didn't make any sense. So I hope I have been able to answer your question. And as I was saying, uh, you also uh, brought up the suffragettes movements. Uh, and uh, that's actually a very good point, but suffragettes, uh, they had the goal to pressure governments. Uh, yes, they did have <coughs> followers, many, uh, many other women were moved by the, um, by the bravery of the, of the suffragettes, but it was not that their goal. They aimed to pressure governments to the point that they gave women the right to vote. You are, yes. Do you know it's not like that? That actually the movement actually split into one of the most moderate gains of results? Uh, thank you for your uh, your eye. Um, well, yes, that is true. But at the uh, at the beginning, it doesn't change the fact that they have the main goal of uh, getting the right to vote from the government. 
So uh, now that I have finished with the reputation, I would like to go on with my speech. Uh, so as previously stated, uh, we strongly believe that um, environmental movements must pressure governments because that is probably the most efficient way. In fact, my argument is all about the effectiveness of how governments can uh, lead to some changes in the long run. So, um, environmental movements should focus more on educating. This is the motion we are discussing. And I would like now to um, remind everyone, to ask everyone, where do people receive their formal education? School. And in this motion, it is clear that environmental movements aim to educate. But under whose jurisdiction does education fall? Under the governments. <laughs> governments, uh, they are the ones that historically have always taken care of education. Yes, there are private institutions, but that's not the matter. And um, we think that governments are the ones that should take care of education. And this is our second argument. Governments are the ones that hold all of the data, all of the information. And they are the ones that hold the executive power, which is probably the most important thing. Because they are the ones that can make an actual change, because they have the power to do so. And they have also other matters, so they need to uh, focus on other things as well. And uh, they are the ones that are able to make the most um, relevant decisions and consider every single aspect for the better of their country. And so um, they have far more access than environmental movements because, as we previously mentioned, governments are the ones that take care of education and by proxy school. School is the, probably the best place to educate people because it is just for that. And um, governments are the ones that can uh, influence school and what is taught in school. Uh, nowadays, schools have many uh, lessons dedicated to enver environmental sensibilization. And why is that? Well, it's because environmental activists have made climate change such an important issue, an issue prominent enough that, that governments have not only taken notice of the issue, but even went as far as including it into the uh, school program. And this is exactly why it is very important for governments to uh, be able to uh, use all of, the, uh, all of the data at their disposal to uh, provide schools with the best programs to sensibilize uh, the, um, all of the uh, students at school. Because if you think about it, uh, students at school are the next generation. They are the ones that will, uh, in the future, be uh, the ones that govern. So if we start by sensibilizing the students, they will one day be the ones that have been sensibilized and will have the executive power to be able to make the right decisions. And in the end, we think that um, the governments are the ones that uh, have not only the power but also the resources, as previously stated, to be able to make this big change. Because environmental uh, movements lack, uh, they lack resources and funds because they rely on um, they rely on donations, which is something that is not stable. On the other hand, governments have an income. they have a very stable source of income, and this income can be used to um, uh, they, it can be used to invest in education and sensibilization, which yeah. uh, the client. Uh, they, in, as I was saying, uh, governments can uh, use this money to be able to sensibilize students in school, and it is something that a lot of schools do nowadays. There are very, uh, there are um, many hours dedicated to civil um, civil education in general, and a lot of, most uh, science teachers, for example, always talk about the issues of uh, carbon dioxide production and things such as these, which are uh, issues that have been brought up multiple times by um, environmental environmental activists. And students who are uh, exposed to uh, all of these things can uh, discuss and even uh, they can discuss and uh, talk about things with their uh, with their peers and their classmates in an educated uh, environment. So with this, I hope I have been able to demonstrate to everyone that. Uh, 
Governments are the ones that should take care of education and are the ones that, uh, that uh, have the most uh, uh, resources to be able to have a wide scale um, effect. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Seven minutes and 45 seconds. I'm the first speaker of the proposition team. Today, my speech will be divided into two parts. The first one will be of rebutting what the other team said, and then I want to be rebuild the argumentation for my team. But first of all, I'd like to um, uh, quote uh, uh, the sentence of the first speaker of the, of the opposition team that said, Government and companies are more efficient than uh, environmental movements. Uh, so, how do you exactly believe that we desire environmental movements that would convince governments that are and companies that are more efficient and more powerful to actually make change? First of all, that this, uh, the first argument was about efficiency. They said governments and companies are more efficient and more effective in changing society, and especially in changing the way of production and to um, a more sustainable way. Well, actually, we agree with that. We're just saying, with the dilemma of the prisoner, that environmental um, movement pressure on these governments simply don't make governments change idea and be more sustainable. We are saying that nowadays there is a dilemma of the prisoner in which one government waits for another to take action on sustainability. And we have seen reality in our context that there are no effective solutions that change things. Because we say that the population um, uh, educated by the environmental movements will be much more effective as shown to change governments and companies' production that respond to uh, the invisible hand of the consumer. Because uh, the, um, they brought no examples of significant changes that actually made for the critical uh, environmental situation that they themselves brought. Because we have not solved the problem. And I make you the example of the Kyoto uh, Protocol, the 2030 Agenda. Yes, there are many goals and many objectives, but where are the effective solutions? There are none. Because, for example, with the COP26, India has stated that the net zero will be reached in 2070. We don't have this time. There are no effective solutions yet. The, the, uh, are, you, um, yes. are you aware that in uh, 2018, the FAO um, has started an initiative, a concrete initiative, to change the big cities like San Francisco and Paris? Yes, I know this, but as I repeat, and as you uh, themselves said, the context is very critical. And the solutions that we have taken till now have not made concrete effects. We are giving you the possibility to change and make something concrete. Because you brought the example of Greta Thunberg, but this is the example that all what she did, she was very important because she sensibilized the people on the question about the environment because she, um, Trump, put her back. So the, the thing that she did was just to sensibilize the population and this worked because educating people works. And uh, uh, what if uh, 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 for POI um, that said that Trump was uh, just a case of the president? And uh, what about we have another president like Trump? We have to wait another four years for making effective solutions. We don't have this that time. The second argument was about effective, effectiveness. They said that the education can um, uh, under the government is the best way 
Yes, but it's not the only. People, especially young people, use a lot of social media. And the problem about time, well, do you think that our, your model actually solves the problem in a shorter time? We don't, because we have it till now. And then, talking about the money, we are saying with our model that we don't need money. Uh, dear, dear, I think that you know that for Instagram stories, we do not have to pay. So, <coughs> we solve all this problem. And, uh, in addition, um, we also said that um, the, um, we would support the motion as it would result in being extremely efficient thanks to their system of action, impactful and effective in the long run. Because they haven't considered that all the environmental movements that I have citated have caused many uh, violent actions, including, for example, work of arts, and sometimes the government did all but to respond to these movements with effective actions. So, we have to change the population. Environmental movement would be more recent and accepted as necessary for the general global purpose this way, because we have showed you that the government governs on the people the companies product for the people. What we have to change are the people because educating them will bring to a more sustainable routine and this will bring to the change of production to a more sustainable way and to the change of ruling to a more sustainable way and only this way the motion and the environmental movement will be more sustainable and we, have, we will arrive to an ecological transition then the citizens would participate more and feel more devoted to resolving the problem because we have shown that a citizen has a very impactful uh, job on the environment because if we um, as a citizen uh, want to make a sustainable choice but simply don't know what to do, the education for social media that are the most used app um, nowadays uh, we give us a strict way to follow in order to gain sustainability because one person may mean does nothing but the whole population is the one that has the power to change government, companies and especially their impacts on the environment. And then the future society wouldn't experience the problems we face nowadays. What do we want to teach our children? Do we want to teach um, they uh, have to throw their uh, paper on the street? Or do we want to change their habits? Do we want to make them more sustainable in order that they will change effectively their um, this system? And we've shown also that the system of education that the other team of federal government has grown is not efficient and normal. Because yes, there is an education for the environment in the schools, but do you, uh, have you seen any change nowadays? Have you seen any effective solution for the problem we are facing? There are none, because still the government and the companies are led by economic interest. And we have finally found a solution in order to mix this economy and environment in order to Finally, let, uh, let the uh, economies and economic interest follow the environmental one. And we can do that just uh, only with our model, only with the education directly by the environmental movements that are not uh, led by economic interests to change and uh, educate uh, individuals and to change society in order to save the world that, as presented by the uh, opposition team, is a very weak and critical world. Thank you. There is speak for seven minutes and
by outlining what has been said so far. In particular, I found uh, um, two points in which the previous speeches can be resumed. The first point is regarding government's role in the uh, fight against climate change. The other two things that governments are not what we should focus on and that we should focus on educating citizens, then that would be more effective. Well, we think that, on the other hand, governments are the key to change in a, in a concrete way our rules. That is because they make law, they have the power to make difference, they have the power to influence a larger scale of population in a much more quicker way. The second point is regarding the effectiveness of the action taken by the government. They, um, the other team thinks that uh, the government did not do concrete actions. And educating the population could be more effective. So that they could change their behavior, they did their behavior in a more sustainable way. Well, we have said that that action is actually taken. Um, Many initiatives are taken by the government and they are leading to a change, to a concrete change. And moreover, educating a whole population, individual after individual, will take a lot of time to happen. Yeah. Therefore, it's not efficient. Yes, can you name these concrete changes? Yes, I will uh, later on in my speech. That's the, that's the soul of my speech. Thanks. Um, um, I would like to respond what has been, uh, to what has been said uh, by the third position speaker. Uh, she has said that, uh, um, for example, they do not need money for uh, Instagram stories, which are the way that they think is uh, to take to spread this information. They say uh, they make a very good point about no money is, need, is needed for an Insta story to spread information. But uh, schools, which are the way that governments uh, educate the new generation, are uh, public. No money is, is needed from the age of 6 to 16, so there is no money needed to our way to spread information to. Moreover, they choose social media as a way to educate and to spread information. I would just like to inform you all that. Yes, second. Uh, but weren't you saying that education is cost? That education as a cost, and then now you're saying that it's free for yeah. 0 to 16. Education can have a cost in private school, but there are also uh, public schools to educate from the, the age 6 to 16, as uh, it's uh, little. So, uh, yes, school is a cost for the government, but not for the um, single individual person. And with that, I hope I have answered your question. Um, as I was saying, social media are to be the way to spread information. But um, social media are also the way to spread fake news. Information can be uh, uh, not totally true, not right. These are fake news. This is a uh, this is a um, this is a happening uh, more and more with the spread of the uh, technology. I would now like to reestablish our argument. In a world where CO2 emissions are reaching the top since ever, where everybody's life is put at stake by the concrete possibility that the Earth will eventually collapse under the huge pollution, we are obligated to take action. We are seriously concerned for the health of the land on which you must depend. We have to inform, but also we have to be fast in doing that. Educating individual citizens is a, is a process that requires time. The only thing that we can afford. The clock is ticking. Faster and faster and it will not stop. We have the necessity to take more efficient and effective decisions. Environmental movements should go directly to the root. 
they should pressure governments to make uh, action. As my colleagues has, dem has, has demonstrated uh, in their speeches, um, the school is uh, one of the best ways to do that. Pressuring the government is key. Let's take, for example, the initiatives three cities of the world. An important organization with global impact like FAO has decided to take action to uh, take as a goal to recreate big centers like Paris and Dublin by making them much more sustainable. But let's take a step back to understand how that happened in the first place. It was thanks to the pressure the pressure that an organization has done towards the government. The environmental movement that is called Our Day Foundation uh, has as a goal uh, to trying to make this world a better place than it is now. Trying to save it from the damage that the human race has done over the years. And in order to achieve their goals, they started protesting. And by doing that, they wanted to try to catch the government attention, which is the, what they show we did. If they hadn't pressured the government, cities like uh, Milan, New York, San Francisco, and other big centers will now remain the same. Thanks to this question, they are not. Uh, and by this example that we have, of course, taken by the book of facts, we uh, hope that we have convinced you that our position, um, the position of um, pressuring the government to, um, to have action more immediate, to have action that are more effective, um, we hope that we have convinced you that this is absolutely the way to go. Educating population will take a lot of time. And a lot of time is what we do not have. And with that, I hope I have uh, um, convinced you that our position is the one that we have today. Thank you very much for your attention. You hear me for seven minutes and nine seconds. And we can now move forward to our replies, so starting with opposition. Uh, <coughs> should educate or pressure. It is, uh, the main question in this debate is obviously what place environmental movements hold in the big scheme of things. And uh, the main points of clash that have emerged in this debate uh, are probably about the role of uh, the parties, of the stakeholders involved. Uh, the most important one is absolutely the role of governments in the fight against climate change. Uh, proposition have claimed that governments um, uh, not uh, they do not care about uh, envir uh, environmental changes and companies as well they don't care about all of these issues. On the other hand, uh, us as um, 
as uh, opposition have claimed that they um, they do care to some extent and that they hold the key to educating the uh, the entire population and I believe you won because by by definition school is the number one place to educate people um, you um, <clears throat> another point of clash was the effectiveness of governmental actions. Uh, proposition have uh, stated multiple times that there has been no concrete changes in climate change uh, by the um, following the actions taken by governments. And uh, us as opposition have uh, presented exam uh, multiple examples of concrete changes made by the governments. And uh, I believe you won this point as well because uh, you, you simply can't pretend to solve problems caused by centuries of damage in a few years. Another thing that we clashed uh, upon was the time. Uh, proposition wants immediate change, they want immediate results. And uh, as us as opposition, we want results in the long run because it is simply impossible to uh, wish for results immediately. Everything that we want to do in life needs time and effort. So now I will present the two worlds that have emerged in this debate, starting with the team that proposition has, uh, by the world that proposition has uh, proposed us. It is a world where companies don't care about change. It is a world where citizens will change their lifestyle simply because influenced by environmental movements. It is a vision where only through ungovernmental uh, organization the world can change where all citizens change their lifestyle and ideology simply because they have been told to do so. On the other hand, our world is one where we prioritize efficiency and effectiveness. It is um, where a world where environmental movements should pressure governments. It is a world where environmental movements hold an important place because uh, they pressure governments and governments will take the best course of action because they have been pressured and we look for, con uh, for uh, results in the near future. As we, uh, as we have established, our world is one where we invest in educating the current generation to see um, the results, to see the fruits of our labor in the next generation. We are, as, um, we are for a government that um, works on educating the current generation to be able to have an educated generation at the uh, at the government in the near future. So I hope I have been able to uh, convince everyone that the place that envir environmental movements have is that of pressuring governments. Because governments do need to be reminded of all of uh, this very important issue that is climate change. Because governments have a lot of things to take care of. So the uh, environmental <coughs> movements are there to remind them. Thank you for your attention. Environmental movements should focus more on educating citizens rather than pressing governments. I identify three main points of clash. First of all, about efficiency and the role of governments. You said, and we agree with that, that governments have more power uh, on uh, environmental movements. But because of this, government change, and uh, because of this, environmental movements will prove you cannot change uh, the governments themselves because the government change if the population change. Then, uh, linked to this uh, point of clash, we identify the second one about the effectiveness and timing. You, you told us that their path, we have demonstrated you that your path takes more time than ours because, as we've seen with our examples, the um, path that environmental movements have taken until now, it is not efficient. Then, third, 
Then the third point of clash is education and future generation. We agreed on the fact that general education and future generation are important. Um, education and future generation are important. And we must take actions in order to sensibilize them to be better uh, consumers and better citizens in the future. You said that the school has a cost, so education is school as a cost for government. So we have proposed to a model in which education coming from environmental movements do not go, do not go across the, the schools, but other social media and social activities organized by uh, environmental movements themselves. Then, moving on to the representation of the two worlds that we would have following the two different uh, um, paths. So, on your world, we continue focusing on, uh, uh, on putting pressure on our governments uh, with no results. Then, uh, the environmental movements remains a little group of people that are all, all often badly seen by the population and the governments themselves. And also uh, brings to uh, angry actions uh, that makes them also even more seen by the population. Then, um, if uh, in your world there are some um, problems and some uh, goals achieved by uh, the governments, the companies do not take uh, part in this change. So uh, it is a partial solution to the problem we have identified at the beginning. On the other side, we find our, our world. In our world, the um, environmental movements uh, fought, uh, concentrate more on educating the population. If the population changes, then the government's poor rules of the population and has to listen to its population changes. If the population changes its demand, the companies will adapt to this demand, as we've seen with the first communication. Then, if the population changes uh, its action and its behavior, its habits, buying habits, and uh, um, also eating uh, habits, we will have uh, a general um, uh, improvement of uh, our planet because we need to change a few levels. Higher levels, governments, companies, but also application level. And this is what we reach with our model. Future generation will be more aware of how to fight climate change and uh, will be the rulers of a more eco-friendly world. Thank you very much. Thank you, your